welcome back. You are still watching Morning Rush. And we probably have about 10 minutes left of our show this morning. And we have a guest with us, Nompumelelo. Nompumelelo, uh, Marilyn Samambwa. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. I hope I said that correctly because I'm always butchering people's names. No, you did it. You did it right. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Nompumelelo is a fashion creator. You're a fashion designer and you um, really do swimwear, resort wear and footwear. Yeah. Now, when, when I hear resort wear, I'm thinking, okay, my mind just went to like Chingeta Lodge and then the guys who are driving the safari trucks and they have the safari gear. Is that what resort wear is? It is. That's what it is. But mine is a bit different. Okay. Um, I'm more of um, for ladies, um, for the beach or like the poolside. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's your flowy dresses, flowy skirts and mm -hmm something that goes with swimwear. With swimwear. So it's yeah. not necessarily the staff wear, it's just the people who are on the resort. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Now, how, why this line? Um, I actually realized there was a gap okay. in Zimbabwe um, with swimwear. So um, my clients used to come and then they would ask for cover-ups. So that's when I decided to include the, the resort wear. That's really good. And you know, you're rightfully saying like there is a gap because sometimes traditionally it's not really our custom or culture to mm -hmm. be wearing bikinis or swimwear and just opening up your body. Exactly. How, how, how then uh, did you f figure out the wraps and things like that pertaining? Because you know, sometimes you can see through those things. Yes. Are your items like that? Um, they are and there are some that actually really cover it up. Yes. Um, um, when I started, I started in 2013 at Zim Fashion Week. Okay. Um, there was a very good reception because I was an experimental fashion show because I wanted to see if um, people would actually receive, receive it. Receive that, yeah. So the reception was very good. So I decided to, to make money out of it. Mm. And I think that's very good because people do still want to go swimming. You're not going to swim in a tracksuit, are you? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> now, what is your assessment of Zimbabwe's fashion industry? Um, it's been growing because I've been in the industry um, since 2008 mm -hmm. and I've seen a lot of growth. Um, our locals are a bit more receptive to local designers and tailors mm -hmm. and that's um, because now we have a lot of like award shows and you actually see that a lot of people attend them, mm -hmm. they're actually wearing local yeah. and um, with uh, the Fashion Council of Zimbabwe, they are driving the wear local hashtag on yeah. social media yeah. and that's, that's ha that has helped a lot. It has and you know, you're rightfully right in saying that there's been a lot more local uh, wear. I see a lot more than we had say 10 years ago, yes. which is good. But what are the pros and cons and what, what has been happening in the, in the fashion industries? What are things to learn and things to not do for you as a fashion designer? As a creator? Yeah. Um, I think the major problem is not delivering okay. for a lot of creatives. Um, that's the thing that we hear a lot of people complaining about. Um, say you make an order and I tell you to come on Friday and it's not ready, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think that's the, the major thing that we need to work on and also improve on the confidence of the buyer. Yeah, I, I think those are some of the big challenges because I know at one point I had something made but then it didn't fit right. It wasn't a size right. 10. Right. It was probably a size 10 on the top and then a size 12 at the bottom. Right. So those are the kinds of things that, how do you deal with those things? Um, I would encourage creatives to actually get training because that's very important. Um, I've noticed that a lot of people will just wake up and feel like, Oh, fashion designing is really cool. It's, it's really a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of training that goes into it. I think people should actually do that. Mm -hmm. um, Be educated in that field. Exactly. Huh? And it's about creativity. Not everybody has that. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. Sometimes you just think, I don't go nini, yeah. but you're not creative enough to that's do that. That's very true. Right. Yeah. So in your, in, in your uh, journey, what have you been in any competitions or exhibitions? I've been in a couple. Okay. I've, I've recently taken part in an All Africa Showcase in footwear, where I came back with uh, two awards for Zimbabwe and wow. myself. Um, it was held in, in Kenya, and it was the first time it's been held in Africa. It's a worldwide competition. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that's the major exhibition. Highlight. <laughs> yes. So, so this in, was in footwear. Okay, so we're talking swimwear, resort wear, and then now footwear. Why did you jump from that to footwear? Um, in 2020, I fell um, critically ill. Yeah. I'm actually dealing with a chronic illness, okay. which doesn't allow me to be sitting on the sewing machine or to be making patterns for a long time because my body doesn't work the same as it used to. Mm. And I've always loved to, to make shoes. Um, I, I trained in that. So I decided why not um, do something that's easy on my body. So it's not exactly a jump. Um, it's something that's always You've just, been there. Yeah. I, I've just like redirected I, I love, a bit. I love how you have been positive about the illness. Yeah. You're not out. Oh, you no. still have a lot more to give Absolutely. and why not do something else that's very that's a great word of encouragement for some people who just give up Absolutely. after hearing something like yes. that so i understand you're also involved in hypertension and renal health awareness yes um do you want to tell us about that um i got diagnosed with hypertension when i was 1920 somewhere there mm -hmm. And in 2020, that's when I was diagnosed with renal failure. Oh, right. So I've um, created groups where we have like a little bit of awareness. And on social media, I'm trying to teach everybody who's not, uh, who doesn't have hypertension or renal failure yet on the things to do and what not to do so that you don't get to the stage to that I'm at. What are, yeah. what, are, what are some of the things that you can actually tell us right here on, on TV right now? Um, if you're hypertensive or diabetic, please take your medication religiously okay. because if you don't, um, that's when your kidneys fail okay. and reduce your salt intake, um, try to avoid sodas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Oh, soda, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's all hard things. Yeah. And I, but I guess it is correct in saying we need to be educated and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I've, for myself, I really regularly go for checks. Yes, yeah, and checking. that's very important yeah. as well. Because um, I think my disadvantage is I didn't get to a point where I had regular checks. If I had had those, they would have caught it maybe when I was till maybe stage one. Okay. But unfortunately for me, it was caught when I was already on stage, on stage five. five. Oh, yes. wow. So um, what, what kind of maybe, should I say, seminars or what... Um, uh, what are you currently engaged in in driving this? Um, I'm actually currently working with the group that we have so what's on, dre on renal support here. Okay. We're actually working on a, setting up a trust where we can probably get funding so that we can travel around Zimbabwe to the rural areas. Um, they probably don't even know about renal failure. Maybe someone has renal failure and they probably think they were bewitched or something. Right. You know, because it's a lot of symptoms that we wouldn't understand and there they are no clinics mm -hmm. that um, have labs to, to take the tests. Okay. And also, um, there's, a, there's not enough renal centers. And it just makes me wonder what happens in the rural areas if there's someone who's got who's renal failure. So we're working on having a lot of seminars to educate people on that. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. And just before we go, um, you're part of the fa Fashion Secretariat as well. Uh, the Fashion Council. The fashion Council. What does that mean? Uh, the Fashion Council uh, was a brainchild of a lot of designers pushed by our veteran uh, mother in fashion design, Grace Humanie. Oh, I love um, her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the Fashion Council is basically um, an entity where designers um, have uh, provided with opportunities um, to, to showcase probably like outside Zimbabwe or wherever and also just to push the drive of the way Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. You know, I love I love the work that you're doing. I love how you're positive about it. Fashion, you look very fashionable. I do okay. wish you had bought a sample so that I could, you know, kind of slay in <laughs> one of those. <laughs> I'll do that for but that's you. Fine. So where do we find you on social media? On social media, on, on Instagram, I'm Royal Kalanga. Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, I'm Nampumelelo Mazlankata Samambwa. Oh, okay. Yes. That's and on Twitter, I'm also Royal Kalanga. Royal Kalanga. Yeah. Papo Papo Prime, DSTV Channel 294. The place to be.